When we are asked to evaluate variable expressions, all it wants us to do is solve and find a final cumulative value of all of the different terms. And what they will do is give us the value of our variables for the expression. When we know what they're worth, we need to plug them into the equation. But when we do that, it's very important that we replace the variables with parentheses and plug the value in. So what I like to do as a template is just wherever I see a variable, I replace it with parentheses. Then I go and I take what that variable is worth and I drop it into that location. This is going to make sure that I'm handling the value properly, especially whenever a negative sign might be involved. So here I have a 6 times a negative 7, which is going to give me a negative 42, and a 2 times a positive 7, which gives me 14. I'm then supposed to combine these two values. Well, if I have a negative 42 and a positive 14, the signs are different, so I need to find the difference between the two values. 42 minus 14, borrow, turns into 28. So the difference is 28, and then the negative was larger than the positive, so this is a negative 28 for the solution. Same thing down here, I take wherever I have a variable, and I put parentheses around it, and then I drop in what that variable was worth. It says W is worth 5, P is worth negative 5, and then I can solve accordingly. Negative 1 times a positive 5 just turns into a negative 5, and 7 times a negative 5 is a negative 35, and I could say plus a negative 35, but really it just means I have a negative 5, I have a negative 35. Because the signs are the same, I'm going to go ahead and add them together. 35 and 5 gives me 40, and because they were both negative, I have a negative 40. You could have just dropped the negative 35 down there and just dropped the add, add sign symbol because it doesn't influence the solution in any way. So your final solution to this expression would be a negative 40. In those earlier expressions, it wasn't as critical having that parenthesis around there other than it was just expressing a, a multiplication. The need for those parentheses really comes into play in situations like this because we have a negative b. Well, it is not that the b value is negative. This is the opposite of whatever b is worth. This negative is not really a part of this b because variables themselves are never truly negative. The numbers that they represent can be, though. So the whole template thing with the parentheses really needs to be applied here. So I had a B, I replace it with parentheses, minus a parentheses, negative, smaller parentheses for the Q, plus Z. Okay, now I'm going to take what those values are worth and plug them in so that I can be handling any negative symbols appropriately. Okay, here. Any negative sign outside of the parentheses is just saying the opposite of whatever's inside. The opposite of a positive 22 is going to be a negative 22. Here I have a bunch of negatives going on, so I'm going to start inside. The opposite of negative 21 is going to be a positive 21, but then I have the opposite of that, which is going to then be a negative 21. So I have a negative 22 a negative 21 plus a negative 22, which just means I have another negative 22. So I have a negative 22, a negative 21, and a negative 22. Because they're all negatives, guess what? I'm adding them all together. I'm combining them and keeping the sign. I owe 22, I owe 21, and I owe another 22. What is that all together? 2 plus 1 plus 2 gives me 5, and 2 plus 2 plus 2 gives me 6. And they were all negative, so a negative 65 applies. If I had just dropped in my value here without that parenthesis, I might have accidentally turned this into, I might have simplified this into a positive 21. Um, it would, this would have worked out probably okay because that was a positive, but this middle value would have gotten messed up if you hadn't have used those parentheses. So I can't stress this enough. Use parentheses wherever your variables are. Okay? 
another reason that those parentheses are so important uh, has to do with when you have an exponent on a negative sign. In this situation where there's no parentheses, the only thing that that exponent of 2 is actually on is the 5. So when I would evaluate this, this would mean I would have the opposite of 5 times 5. Well, 5 times 5 is 25, and what's the opposite of that? Negative 25. So this is a negative answer. Here, because the exponent is on the parenthesis value, that means it is including both the negative and the 5. So if I have a negative 5 times a negative 5, negative times negative turns into a positive, and 5 times 5 is 25. So you are going to get a different answer depending on whether you have parentheses around it or not. So if you had something like um, 7a squared, where a is a negative 2, if you didn't have that on there, you might get the wrong answer because you might um, drop, if you had a 7 times, and if you didn't have the, the parentheses around it, this should have been a negative 4, leading you to a negative 28 as your answer. But instead, because we've wrapped our variable in parentheses, and then plug things in around it accordingly, negative 2 times a negative 2 is a positive 4, positive 4 times a positive 7 is a positive 28. We'll get a little more involved here. Replace our variables with what they're worth. Negative 1 for n, negative 2 for w, and then plug everything in around that accordingly. Now we follow the order of operations and evaluate all exponents. 1, negative 1 squared means negative 1 times negative 1, which is a positive 1. And a negative 2 times a negative 2 means a positive 4. Now I can multiply this, and I can multiply in any order and get the same answer. So a negative 3 times a positive 1 is a negative 3. Negative 3 times a positive 4 is going to be a negative 12. You're going to be given some story problems, and this format for an expression is going to be a very common format for equations for the rest of this math class because this is written as a linear function. And the story problem is that you're, you're producing these items and you have a startup cost of $124,000 before you produce any item. Once you get that startup going, you're ready to start producing. Every item that you produce has a cost of $18. And you're trying to figure out the total cost that has been accrued depending upon a different quantity of items that have been made. So basically, if I make one item, I add $18 to my cost. If I make a second item, I add another $18 to my cost. A third item, another $18. And so this repetition of adding and adding lets us just shorten that with uh, multiplication. Well, they then tell us, well, how much would it cost for us to produce 6,200 of these? Well, 6,200 of these at $18 each, we need to find out what that cost is. So we just plug in our value for Q. So 18 times 6,200. Uh, I did not have a calculator ready to go, so give me just a moment. 6,200 times 18 gives us $111,600. Okay, so that's the cost just to produce those items. That did not incorporate the startup cost. So I need to add that value to the cost to just produce those items and see what my overall expense has been. So I'll take my cost to produce plus 124,000 and I get a final value of $235,600. So whenever you're given a story problem like this, you're just plugging in a quantity, multiplying it by how much it takes to produce each one of those, adding your startup value to it, and getting a final cumulative total. No dollar signs, no commas needed, just type in the numbers.